Another day, another dollar. Time to head back to the garage. Okay, so there's a couple of things you want to do. Like here. I'm just going to pull out right in front of this car. And then going to cut over. Because I have to. You just do what you have to do to get where you need to go. There's one basic rule you can pretty much apply to driving in the Indonesia, Vietnam, and many other countries where the driving is a little less than regular. You can do just about anything as long as you do it slowly and people can see you do it so they can avoid you. So, you know, pass on a hill, on a turn, no problem, as long as people can see you doing it. Going the wrong way down the road, <clears throat> right over here, yeah, just do it slowly. Make sure people can see you doing it. Running a red light, just kind of poke through and weave your way through, nice and easy, so people can see you. Um, this is not an endorsement by any means. It's just a simple fact, though. All right. It's not an endorsement. It's just an assertion. That's true. <clears throat> now, to be honest, normally, I am not driving home at this time of day. This is 5 o'clock. It is... When rush hour, peak traffic really starts to, to hit in. It'll be really bad until about 6.30. A good hour and a half to two hours of heavy traffic. And it can be, get pretty tight. It can get so tight that you would not be surprised if you could, you can't walk between the bikes, you could only pretty much walk from the back seat of each scooter to the next. At least that's the way it used to be before the cars came. And now it's more of a walk on top of the hoods of the cars, but I wouldn't recommend you actually do that. It's just a figure of speech. Be honest, if you're gonna do a lot of commuting during peak hours, this 400cc bike is not very good for that. It's too big, even for here. Even a bike like this, which is not that big by Western standards, is usually too big of a bike for these roads, where every inch counts. Every inch can count here. And there are no lanes, as you can see. Lane splitting, it's so cute when I watch these American moto vloggers talk about, you know, the talk about the really cool ability of being able to lane split. It's like, well, you see, in Vietnam, we don't call that something, you know, special or unique, requiring great skill and, and this really interesting technique. That's just what we call driving. Here, not only do the motorcycles lane split, even the cars lane split. So it's a rather interesting situation. Also remember, people don't look in their mirrors. Like this lady ahead of me in the pink helmet, she doesn't even have mirrors on her scooter. She's never looked beyond, whoa boy, there you go. See what I mean about do something and anything you want? She's probably never even looked beyond like a 100 degree sweep of an arc in front of her. Beyond that, people just look at what's going on ahead of them. They don't, they don't look over their shoulders. They don't know, know, even know what a blind spot is. Check your blind spot. What's that? So whatever happens behind them, oh, he's looking over his shoulder. What a good man. What a good man. That's, that's not always the case though. 
You just, like in skiing, you just have to assume that people are not paying attention to what's going on behind them. Your responsibility is right here. Yeah, helmets are the law. Unless you don't want to mess up your pretty hair, then it doesn't count. But then if you look at this helmet right in front of me, this guy with a white helmet, that thing is useless. It's a piece of plastic with basically no liner whatsoever. If he falls and falls on his head, those that plastic will shatter and scalp him, take the skin right off his head. So you'd be better off being like that and having no helmet at all than to be like that and wear a helmet that is really not gonna do you a bit of good and will actually be more dangerous to you. When people see my full face helmet, they say, wow, you got such a big, heavy helmet. That's got to be really uncomfortable. And I say, well, yeah, it's uncomfortable when I'm riding, but hopefully it'll be more comfortable when I hit the pavement. And I have. You know, when you're riding bikes here, it's not a matter of when or if, if you're going to have an accident. It's just a, it's a matter of time. You're going to have a spill. So do you want to go really fast and weave through traffic and oh speaking of doing anything in traffic here you go you could do this just do it slowly just do it slowly it's okay you got to be lifting and covering your brakes really be paying attention it's constantly kind of sweeping what's ahead of you and be kind of predicting what people are going to do before they do it Some things can kind of telegraph their intentions. Other times, you'll have no clue until it happens. Someone will just pull out randomly. This guy, he's trying to look over and go to the left. You can see him kind of looking down as he goes to the left. Okay, fine. Ooh, a Bentley, a Bentley, four doors. Yeah, I've seen more Bentleys and Rolls Royces in one month in Hanoi than I did in my entire life in the U.S. True fact. Now we're just going to go here. We're going to go, guys, please, please strengthen numbers. Please don't. Please slow down. Thank you. Yay. Beautiful afternoon. Soon it'll be night. Spring in Hanoi. Gorgeous. Hopefully this guy doesn't clobber me with this baton. I don't think so. Hmm, kids coming back from school on the way to English lessons. Yes, kids here every night after school, they go to after school classes, six to seven nights a week. They usually will have one day off a week, that's Sunday, and on Sunday, they, their parents will send them to extra classes, of course. Oh, there's my friend. Is that my friend? No, it's not my friend. It could have been, but it's not. <laughs> Coffee corner, where we recognize many people, but not today. On the power. 60. Maybe a bit too fast for this road. Should we go along the lake? Yeah, why not? Skip the traffic in the dirt road, the construction. Let's hit it. Well, this is a nice spot to go hang out. Walk with your lady if you want. Quiet and peaceful road. Ah, good old West Lake, where all the Westerners live. Expat Lake, that's what they should call it. 
All right. Ooh, the kid's out for bicycling practice. I guess you got to do it somewhere, sometime. Yeah, these roads, everybody is out. Strollers, cars, motorcycles, everybody, everybody uses the road and they just go in every direction. And people will sometimes put their, their dogs on a leash, but not always. So you do have to watch out for dogs as well. All right, back at the garage. Let's see what's going on. Is my dirt bike here or not? <laughs> 